Hello viewers, you are welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be taking you to how to answer chemistry experiments. Or let me say, how to answer chemistry practical in Y. And I will be giving you how we can do this without performing the experiments. But before I commence today's video, I would like you all to understand that this video is going to come in four series, or let's say four to five series, in which each of these series I'll be giving you likely tips on how to answer chemistry practical without even touching the apparatus, and you are going to perform your experiments all together. All I'm going to be doing today is all about the qualitative analysis. I know that many students have been asking questions about how can we go about the qualitative analysis in WAHEC. So in this video, I'll be showing you how you can perform, how you can write down your, how you can perform your experiments under qualitative analysis without you performing the real experiments. And you can also wish to perform the real experiments, even though when you perform the experiments, you can know, okay, this is the final answer to where I'm going altogether. But before I comment, I would like you to please subscribe to my channel. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and also try to like the video. And please don't forget if I leave this, please try to comment on the comment box section below just to appreciate the work that I'm doing. Please, thank you very much. Let's start with today's topic. Today we are going to be looking at qualitative analysis. You see, you see, identification of chemical substances in qualitative analysis altogether is based on two things. The first thing is known as the tests, while the second thing is known as the observation. Altogether, after we've gotten the observation, then we can find the inference. Inference. But know that identification of a chemical substance in qualitative analysis is based on these two things: the test and the observation. Now, talking about the test, what do we mean by tests? What is a test? A test is any physical change or chemical change that is that a substance is subjected to. Altogether. A physical change or chemical change that a substance is subjected to is what we call a test. Altogether, for example, a substance might be subjected to eating in the test. Altogether, or addition of a chemical substance to that substance, let me say a chemical reagent to that substance, is also a test. Altogether, or a test can also be critical examination of the substance. After you test a substance, the next thing is for to find the observation. Okay, after the test, what is the observation? What do you observe from the test that you've been what, that you performed? That is our observation. So an observation, the result that is obtained from a test, that's what we call observation. Now, you see, the results might be usually based on the physical and the chemical property of the substance that is tested, or the new substance that is formed. That is what the result is all about. All together. Now, what are the physical, uh, uh, what are the physical or chemical properties that we can see to show that okay, this is the result of the experiment? Number one is the color. Number two is the odor. The color. Number two is the odor. Now, you see, this color change of the substance is number one. Why? Maybe if the substance is tested using a litmus paper, there must, be, there must be a color change. As you also know that when a red litmus paper or a blue litmus paper is dipped into an acid or a base, there is a change in color from red to blue or from blue to red. In my next video, I'll be showing you each of these things one by one and how you can go about it if a question is asked on that. I will show you in this series. Please follow me to the end of this series. All together, 
Another thing that you can see in the observation, relation of color, odor, is precipitation. Either maybe the test is going to form a precipitate. Altogether, precipitation. That is another important thing that you should know under this qualitative analysis. Altogether, under this thing that you should know there is the solubility. Solubility, solubility of the substance. Either what is formed is soluble or is insoluble. And again, under this precipitation, a precipitation, maybe it's going to form a precipitate or not. We will check it here. Now, the precipitate might be a soluble precipitate or an insoluble precipitate. These are what you should what? Know. All together. Now, today, I'm going to be taking you to how to identify, identify chemical substances. We are, we are going to be looking at four ways of identifying chemical substances. The first one is identification based on solubility. We are going to check if the substance is soluble in water, we can easily identify some substances. Are you getting when we dissolve the substance in water? All together. Number two, we can identify them based on the color change in litmus paper. That is number two. The color change of the substance in litmus paper, we can identify them based on that. We can also identify based on chemical reagent. When a chemical reagent is added to the substance, an example of chemical reagent may be sodium hydroxide is added to the substance or an acid like HCl or H2SO4, which is the most common substance, or let's say barium chloride is added to the substance altogether. What is going to be the change? Now we see that is the use of the chemical reagent. So we can use the chemical reagent. Under this use of the chemical reagent, that is where the mostly asked question on qualitative analysis, although the asked question based on the four, but under this use of the chemical reagent, that's where you can be testing for the cations and the anions. As you also know, the cations are produced by metals are cations, while anions are non-metals. So we are going to be seeing them one by one in this. Why the last one in the world is the flame test. Actually, the flame test, they really said that for you in the exam, but you should you ought to know that. But this three is quite important in your YA preparation or in any examination altogether. Now, in today's series of the video, I'll be starting with identification based on solubility in water. Altogether. Now, take note on something that's any substance that will be soluble in water must be a substance that is polar. I should also know that water on its own is a polar substance, and a polar substance can only dissolve a pol sorry, a water on its own is a polar solvent, and a polar solvent can dissolve a polar substance. Notice that that is one of the rules of solubility that a polar substance, so substance will dissolve in a polar solvent. Altogether, now, any substance that is, most of the substance that we have in chemistry, there might be what? Either covalent substance or ionic substance. Now, as you to know that all ionic substances are polar in nature, it simply shows that ionic substances will surely dissolve in water. Why? Because they are polar. But you see, covalent substances can be polar and can also be non-polar. It is depending on the kind of bond that is formed between them. Maybe they consist of a polar bond or they consist of a non-polar bond. That is why covalent substances all together. Now, that is that. A substance that will be soluble must be polar. Now let's now take a look at what solubility will. How do we now identify these substances? These substances can be identified based on the solubility rule. All together, and I try to list out the solubility rule for you on the board so that you can come again to cross check and understand that okay, if this substance is soluble, that means this substance should be present. All together, the ion of the substance should be what present. It has my inference. These are the observations that you can see. Now, number one, in the room, all sodium and potassium, all sodium, potassium and ammonium salts are soluble. Take notes. Sodium, potassium, and ammonium, the salts that is formed by these three substances are always soluble salts. 
automatically this they are polar salts all together this salt they will surely dissolve in water i don't want to know what kind of element that they combine with let's take let me give you an instance if ammonia if ammonia is to be dissolved take a look ammonium salts for example ammonium is reacting with sulfates ammonium sulfates this is salt ammonium can also react with chloride which is a salt all together don't forget that this thing is term of ionic salts it is ionic in nature because when this thing dissolves in water it tends to form ammonium ion plus chloride ion which is ionic in nature the same thing applies to this it is ionic in nature when it dissolves it forms ammonium ion and sulfate ion when it dissolves or we can also even have ammonium nitrates ammonium nitrates is also part of the salts ammonium chloride ammonium carbonates ammonium carbonates CO2 all together these are sorts of ammonium you see all sorts of ammonium all sorts of chloride like let's say sodium chloride sodium sulfates sodium carbonates all together sodium carbonates sodium nitrates sodium nitrates all these sorts of sodium or ammonium are all soluble in water all together so maybe for instance you have to dissolve the substance all together in water and you notice that the substance dissolves completely in water then we can easily infer that if this substance is to dissolve in water there must be a presence of either sodium or potassium or aluminium must be present in that solution sodium is present aluminium is present potassium sorry sodium ammonium and potassium is present in that solution why because the solution is the substance will dissolve in water all together now the second thing is that all common trouser nitrate five salts note all trouser nitrate five salts of every most of all these substance will dissolve in water what does that mean it simply means if i have barium nitrates barium trouser nitrates barium trouser nitrate is going to dissolve in water note that barium trouser nitrate to dissolve in water sodium trouser nitrate to dissolve in water ammonium trouser nitrate to dissolve in water and all other nitrates every nitrate every nitrate source will surely dissolve in water so when we are given anything that is requiring what nitrate there are some element or there are some what major substances that must be present in it but one of the major substances that will be present is what most of your metals are present in them so when we get to this series of this video i'll be showing you how to understand when we get to addition of chemical reagents to them because sometimes the question i might give to you why might consist of the three of them why in some experiment it only consists of only this one and two why some is going to consist of these two and i will be showing you this year's practicals what you need to know and what will be your final answer to the question given all together now the third thing is now the all common tetrasome six salts please note all tetrasome six salts are water soluble but there are some of them that does not dissolve in water all together i think i omit something you see when i say something dissolve in water it simply means they really dissolve in cold water please note because there are some substances that they can only dissolve in hot water I'll tell you so a substance that is soluble in water is only dissolving in cold water to form an aqueous solution I will tell you a substance that will dissolve in cold water to form an aqueous solution is all, that's what we mean that was a, a substance that has been dissolved in water are you getting something so any other substances that can only be dissolved when the water is warm is not what soluble in water I will tell you like that so please let's take note of that. Now, take a look at this. The reason why I branch that is because of this. All common tetrasulfate six salts are water soluble except that of barium and lead. Are we getting something now? Barium and lead, sort of barium and lead are not water soluble. Please note that. Barium or what sort of what tetrasulfate six sort of barium? That means barium. Let me remove, try to remove this. Barium tetrasulfate 6 BaSO4 Barium tetrasulfate 6 
or lead the transfer of six. These two sorts, transfer of six of these two sorts are insoluble in water. Why the red element like sodium to the six, ammonium to the six, potassium to the six, and the likes are all soluble in water? Are we together? Please note each of these. The third thing that you need to know is how common chloride salts are water soluble, except that of silver and lead. Please note, all chloride salts are water soluble. But whenever they give you silver chloride, please note, because these are common, these are the reagent that is common that they can give to you. They can give you barium chloride, they can give you silver chloride, silver nitrates. Please note, you are given silver nitrates, automatically silver nitrates will surely dissolve in water. Silver chloride, lead chloride, they can give you as a reagent. But not something that works. All chloride, if it were to be sodium, ammonium, barium, all together, potassium, all this chloride will dissolve in water, with the exception of silver and lead. But there is an exception to this. Take a look. You see, silver and lead cannot dissolve in cold water. That is the problem here. They will not dissolve in cold water. That's why we say they are not soluble. But lead will dissolve in hot water. All together, it is going to dissolve in hot water. Which simply means that lead will be, will be soluble only when the water is hot. That is when it will be soluble. Now the last thing is now that all the carbonate first salts are water insoluble except that of potassium, sodium and ammonium. All together, please note, salt of sodium, potassium and ammonium is always soluble. You grab any form of their salt will surely be soluble. But other trisocarbonates are insoluble. Please take note on that. Other trisocarbonates are what? Insoluble. So I think we've gotten the solubility so we can easily cross check this back later. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to continue to stay with us to the end of this series as I need to understand that the series will be in four, in four series all together. And at the end of the series, I'll be giving you this year's one practical. What you are expected to put down in your exam, I'll be giving you in this year's one practical. In my next video, I'll be showing you, I'll be showing you how can we identify a substance using litmus paper. Are we together? How can we identify a substance using litmus paper? How do you know that? Okay, this substance is present. This one is present using a litmus. Paper. That's what I'll be showing you in this video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like my channel and also drop a comment for me just to help me all together. Please just drop a comment for me. If it's just only text to me, I'll be happy. It will really appreciate that. So that's show appreciation for the work I'm doing. Thank you so much.